Good evening. I'm called to order this meeting of the Town of Window Board of Commissioners. Thank you all for being here tonight. A couple special things happening tonight, and I'm looking forward to that. Pledge of Allegiance tonight, we're going to be led by Dacia Smith of Girl Scout Troop 4484. Come across the podium. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our invocation tonight is from the Wendell Christian Church, Mike Harrison. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. I don't know which one of these is live. <laughs> yeah, Madam Mayor and Board of Commissioners, we, we appreciate being here tonight. Uh, dual purpose, we're representing Wendell Christian Church on behalf of the Wendell Council of Churches. So we're, we're very pleased to be here. Please join me in prayer. <clears throat> Gracious, loving God, we come to you this day at this quiet, peaceful time, asking your guidance and wisdom and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer as a united group and nurture the bonds that bring us closer as members of this community. Fill us and those entrusted stewards of your creation in this community with your grace, Lord, encouraging those challenged by making decisions that individually affect people and our community as a whole. Open our minds and open our hearts so that we might receive your wonderful gifts of love, joy, peace, and grace. Continue to remind us that all that is decided here tonight, all that will be accomplished or planned, is for your greater glory. We ask these things in your precious name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there any adjustment to the agenda? Madam Mayor, I'd like to make a suggestion for an adjustment to the agenda. Uh, I would respectfully request uh, items number 7, 8, and 10 uh, be moved uh, to be numbers 2, 3, and 4 uh, on our agenda. I have a uh, unforeseen conflict in Raleigh that I need to desperately get back for. Right. So we need to move items number 7, 8, and 10 to the spot in front of number 4, I think. Uh, num it would be in front of number 2, so in front of number, it would, they would become number items number 2, 3, and 4. Okay, in front of items number 2, 3, and 4. Is there any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. All right, so let's go straight in then to number seven. And that is a budget ordinance amendment for fiscal year 2017-18. Mr. K. Thank you. Yes, Madam Mayor, members of the board, um, you have in your packet there the uh, budget amendment for the 2018 fiscal year. Um, basically, this is a year-end cleanup, tune-up, process that we do every year to uh, to the line items there to make sure that we've got um, our, our finances in order there for, for budgetary purposes. Um, a lot of what we see there um, is, is kind of a carryover from the prior year. For example, a big part of it is the part of grant. That was a continuation of a project that went 
across multiple fiscal years. <laughs> so this year was the final year of that project. We got the money, came in this year, we finished out and completed that project. So you, um, that's part of what's going on um, on the revenue side as well as some of the expenditure side. Um, staff is just asking for this budget ordinance amendment to be adopted by the board. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Kay? Madam Mayor, Madam Mayor, excuse me, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve, uh, adopt and approve the budget ordinance amendment for fiscal year 2017 and 18. Okay. So we have a uh, motion to adopt the budget ordinance amendment for 2017-18. Is there any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, right. Go to number eight. The Wendell Amended Community Block Grant Development uh, Block Grant Cooperation Agreement. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the board. Uh, at the June 11th meeting, I presented some material on a cooperative agreement between the town of Wendell and Wake County that the uh, majority of the municipalities in Wake County are, are signing in order to participate as an entitlement community and receive CDBG and home grants and similar federal grant funds uh, through the county. The, at that meeting, the town attorney had posed a question regarding um, some language within it uh, that talked about enforcement of policies related to things like excessive use of force. Uh, since that meeting, he's talked to the Wake County attorney, gotten a little bit more information on what that language would have to be, and identified existing language within our policies that we had in place already that would satisfy that requirement. Uh, so he has no objection to us moving forward and um, signing that agreement. Okay. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Bergmark? Uh, Chief, you raised a little bit of discussion last time. Or are you good with this as written? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Madam Mayor, I move adoption of the policy as written. Okay. We have a motion to adopt the policy as written. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Now we're going to go to number 10. <coughs> to update, <coughs> excuse me, to the town's fiscal year uh, comprehensive list of fees. Madam Mayor, members of the board, on June 11th, the board approved the um, comprehensive list of fees. And then on the next day, we had an update from the city of Raleigh that uh, they had made a change that we were not able to uh, include. Uh, and so what we would be asking is that the fees that we have already adopted remain as they are uh, with the addition of the water capital facilities fee going up uh, from it was $1,315 to $1,373. That's going up $68. Uh, and the sewer capital facilities fee, that was $1,938. It is going up $2,522 as adopted by Raleigh, which overall is an uh, increase of $584. So again, this is based on Raleigh's ordinance of their fee schedule. Um, our performer were required to charge at least what they do anyway, but right. we're putting in this in here for the purpose of transparency. When developers come, we wanted it to be available, right. and we wanted to amend that. Okay. Does anyone have any questions from Ms. Finer? Motion. Make a motion to approve the okay. amended fee. Oh, sorry. This, this particular amendment we did. We did. You told me that before. Um, I, we are required to allow for public comment um, for this. So, if, does anyone have anything that they would like to say? We're happy to hear what you have to say about it. Okay. None. Thank you for the reminder. <coughs> Without making a motion to approve the amended fee schedule for 20 year, uh, fiscal year 2018-19. Okay, so we have a motion to approve the fee list. Is there any discussion on the motion? The fee, the, yeah. All in favor? Uh, okay. Let's come back now to the item number two. Madam Mayor, if you don't mind. Uh, point of personal privilege. Um, what I'll say is that, uh, uh, one, the governor's budget, or the, the, the budget of the state house has now been uh, officially adopted and will go in place in July 1, and the $50,000 that will be awarded to Wendell uh, will officially be awarded to Wendell. So I, I'm happy about that, and I want to highlight that. Um, 
there are things going on in Raleigh tonight at the General Assembly that I need to depart now, which is why I made the motion to move all voting items up to the top of the agenda. Uh, and I appreciate the board's indulgence in allowing me to do that. Uh, the only item I didn't move was item number 11, and I will say that uh, it is my understanding that uh, this nonprofit, uh, this public private partnership is a, is a good arrangement. Uh, so I will just voice my support for that, and I understand that the mayor has done a considerable amount of work in trying to make this a reality. So I, I do want to voice my support for that. Um, but before you move on to the agenda, I want to let everyone know that I, I'm here. I'm voting uh, on the things that I. I that we can vote on, but based on my full-time job, I need to return to Raleigh. Um, so I appreciate the public and, and more importantly, the board and the mayor's support in allowing me to do that. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna exit if that's all right with everyone else. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve. All in favor? Uh, all right. <clears throat> Item number four is recognition and update on the Parks and Recreation Trust Fund grant. Mr. Pulaski. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, we just thought it was a good time since the part of is wrapped up and finished. Uh, we did get our sign off from the Recreation Resource Services Office who does oversee the part of that it was completed on time and it was completed on budget and they were very thrilled, which does help us in future. Um, during those meetings, a lot of the voting members ask, have this, has this community ever received a part of Yes, they have. Their next question is always, were they on budget and on time? Uh, so that's good news for our future. Um, so I brought up in front of us um, the, the original part of plan for this uh, project. Some of the things did have to change just based on budget. And once we got out there and started looking at some things with the designers that just didn't quite sit well, the first thing you'll notice was this um, parking area here. Um, that was on the original um, part of grant application. Once we got out there and realized we were only going to be gaining 80 spaces when on a T-ball Saturday, if you've been out there, we're parking about 200 cars. Uh, so we really hated to lose that amount of parking space. So we opted um, to pave this existing parking lot at the bottom. Um, it ended up saving us a lot of money um, because they did not consider the original parking area as parking. So we were going to have to build a lagoon and there were going to be all this uh, water runoff logistics that we were going going to have to jump through hoops to do um, and they considered the gravel lot at the bottom already already a parking lot since it had gravel and they considered it to be impermeable um, so th that was one of the changes um, that we made right off the bat and, and kept us on budget uh, for this project and the only other major thing is the game courts were slightly moved on this map we had them adjacent to the playground we decided to move those simply for safety uh, once we got out there and started thinking about horseshoe pits with posts sticking out of the ground. We didn't want them near uh, the playground. So we did end up opting to move them more to this area here and we actually got a, a ramp to those uh, facilities making those ADA as well. Um, but this was the plan. Everything in green that you see was part of this plan. It was a $556,000 project of which $250,000 was funded through the state of North Carolina with the Parks and Recreation Trust Fund. While we had all the heavy equipment out there, we also discussed um, doing off part of money was go ahead and fixing some of the drainage issues that we were having in this area. If you've been back there, you notice that there's a there's a huge hill back there, and all that water runoff was coming into the field, and particularly on the uh, Doug Proctor field, uh, that infield we were just having a time with trying to keep it dry. Um, so they came in there while they had the equipment there. It saved us a lot of money because they included it on the same insurance policy. They had the equipment there. The men were already there, so it saved us a lot of money having them go ahead and grade that out and put in drainage. And we've noticed a huge difference on that as well already. Um, but they ended up putting a ditch through there, and then they ran that water is now coming through um, coming through that area um, but that project um, I think it's increased traffic to our park probably a hundred percent in the at nine o'clock in the in the morning if you come out of there people on the playground our seniors are walking on the track at seven o'clock in the morning we're noticing less walkers in the gym now because they're preferring to go outside which is wonderful and not only is that providing um, 
uh, an outdoor walking track, it's also making our ball fields ADA accessible. Uh, so people with uh, wheelchairs, limited um, mobility can now get to our, our ball fields. We did have some what we would call handicapped parking spaces, but with a background in special pops, they were not true ADA accessible handicapped parking spaces. Now we have four that are actual ADA um, accessible handicapped spaces, um, which is good. All right, so next I have a slideshow. These are kind of befores while they're doing it and afters. Pay attention to the, to the befores and the afters in particular. And I'm just gonna kind of talk about a few of them. It's not gonna take me long to get through. Um, this was the beginning of the whole project. Um, started with the playground. Uh, we did receive a $45,000 community grant which helped also fund this project. Um, it essentially paid for the labor. Um, so we were supposed to get a, about a $90,000 piece and we ended up with $125,000. Um, so this was the gentleman, him and one other guy did that whole project together by themselves with that single tractor back there. Um, so here you can see they're kind of making their way through. It was cold and they made it through some snowy days. Um, hard ground. Um, this was some more installation picks. And so this was the day they put the mulch in. Um, it didn't take the kids long to get it knocked down and we actually hit to the point where we're gonna need some more mulch before too long. And I never would have thought that seeing that much mulch put in. And as you can see, it's definitely a focal point at the park. Um, our tournaments are popular, you know, with our, the smaller ones, they tend to gravitate towards the, towards the playground. Parents can still sit at a ball game and watch one child while another one's playing safely in, in viewing distance, where before, you know, our playground was down at the bottom. Um, and this was um, one that I actually took just the other day. You can see how popular. This was about lunchtime, which is, gets kind of busy out there. A lot of picnickers, a lot of tents have started popping up out there as well. But definitely a huge improvement to the park, and it's an, also an ADA accessible playground. So it is offering um, another activity for, for our, our, our ADA citizens. This was our, our games courts, um, our bocce courts. We built these in-house. Um, we opted for one league size bocce court because you can always shorten it up and play for the little guys if they wanted to. And then Matt had some tiles laying, some of the old brick tiles laying around, so he wanted to spruce up the horseshoe pit. So Matt Triver uh, did his little checkerboard and pads there on the side, but um, both bocce balls and horseshoes are available for rent, uh, checking out at the, uh, at the office at no charge. And this was the guys that started putting in the uh, walking track, which like I said, also made the park ADA accessible for many. Um, they worked hard and a lot of long hours and watching them work, I was really concerned with how it was gonna end up because you can see the outside of the walking track areas, they, they did a lot of work out there and there was a lot of dirt brought in and removed. Uh, so this is, this is from the Jake Mayfield toward, down towards Doug Proctor. And this was what is now an ADA accessible ramp. Um, this was on the back side of the Jake May field. And this was looking towards uh, Jake May. This is on the back side of the Jake May field where they did have to um, put in a, 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 a drainage pipe. Uh, there were some drainage issues back there and getting that up to the, to the height that was required. So you can see this is finished. This was taken the other day. Um, it looks great. It, it makes the park very clean. These are two of our new handicap spots um, in the park that are true handicap spots. Uh, this is around the back side of Jake May. Uh, the grass is taken well. It's done a, it, it's done a great job around there. Um, this is the crew um, asphalt in the, the parking lot down at the bottom. This is has been a tremendous project. It's saved us a lot of Roundup. Matt would spend a lot of time down there cleaning up weeds and just trying to keep that clean. And we've also noticed that paving down there has also increased or decreased the amount of night traffic that are down there. Um, but it's gotten us 85 spots, I believe. So it's, it's helped out a lot down there because without parking lines, people are kind of parking however they want to. But with distinct lines, they're, they're, they're staying in their spots. But it's a huge improvement down there. Um, just visually, it looks a lot more clean. Uh, and this is where the multipurpose field is now. Uh, it was overgrown stump field. You can see by these two pictures that it was definitely overgrown. It was getting bush hogged a couple times a year. Uh, this was them coming in to clearing out some of the space so that we could get our, our required um, soccer field size length in. 
This was after it was all cleared. They haven't graded anything. This was, this was just after the clearing. This is them grading and bringing in the topsoil. Um, the existing soil that was there was not what was what was necessarily needed to grow the sod. So they brought in quite a bit of topsoil that met all the requirements. And this is them packing it down. This is when they were finished. Um, this is with topsoil done. And this is the irrigation going in. Um, they did a wonderful job. They showed us how to work everything and how to winterize it. And uh, we had one head that was leaking. They came down the next day and fixed it instantly. Uh, the types of head that they're using are very cheap to replace. We can run out and get them fairly easily. And that's why they went with this kind of system. <clears throat> and while the irrigation was going in, they also put in the lights. Uh, they they positioned the lights during the daytime with a laser and a guy standing down on the field in the middle of the daytime, which I, I had never seen. So, um, But you'll see on the last picture that every inch of the field is lit. Uh, the, the field lighting requirements that we wanted was 30-foot candles, which is what's required for high school field lighting. We felt that that would definitely meet a recreational need uh, at that rate. This is the side pallets coming in. This is the guy's lane. Uh, the field is actually slightly larger than a regulation soccer field lengthwise. We did that on purpose so we can kind of, for two things, we can move it around so that the mouths of the goals don't get worn out, and also we can turn fields sideways and run three the long way in one regulation lengthwise. And we already have um, East Oak Academy uh, is going to play all their varsity and JV boys and girls games um, on this site come fall and spring. And it's the irrigation uh, as they're testing as they're laying the sod. Final picture taken two weeks ago after a softball tournament. I just happened to be at the park and hadn't even turned the lights on. So ran out, flipped the light switch, and um, snapped this picture um, right before Matt cut it, probably for the first or second time. Um, so that was part of, in a nutshell, um, it took a little while to do, but, you know, we had a couple of winters in between. and. Um, having a different grant with the playground, we had to get that one, to get that part of the project, go ahead and roll in right up front. But uh, we received rave reviews from it. Um, Rick, Jen Beadle from Recreation Resource Services loved the project. It scored great um, with the panel, and that scores well for us in the future. And Jen actually came by last week or week before and dropped off. These are new this year, and they're to be displayed at the park. Um, they give us one. She said, we can purchase more. I'm thinking <laughs> our, park, our, our project is so spread out, I, won't, I would like to get probably two more uh, just because we have a soccer field on one side of the road right. and a walking track and a playground. And, right. um, so they're made by Correctional Enterprises, which we have some, some work with. So we're going to order up two more. Uh, but they haven't done these in the past, so that's, it's exciting to get, and they'll look good in the park. So we were proud to get that. Any questions? Anyone have any questions? Um, I, I just I have a comment, a, kind of a long one. I want to just personally thank you. I don't know if many people know this, but Jeff, I don't think even had Parks and Rec shirts yet when he got this dropped in his lap. And um, I know that I personally really pushed and said, no, we don't want to wait 18 months or 15 months to apply. We need to do it now. And not only did you do that then and get the grant, we also made lobby improvements, numerous. We did the um, dog park, the community garden has come along, Disc the frisbee golf. golf, and beach volleyball. Beach volleyball is there, and, and numerous additions to our programming. So, you know, he has been very, very busy. The entire Parks and Rec staff has been very, very busy. But I know that you were just brand new here. I don't know if I had even officially met you yet when we said, no, we want you to go ahead and apply now. And I think you had about three months to get it all in and get it done. So I just wanted to thank you for that. Since I pushed you in front of everybody, I want to thank you in front of everybody. I went out there yesterday in my golf cart and rode around and looked all at all of it, knowing we were going to talk about it tonight. And I'm just so very proud of it and was trying to remember what it used to look like. And it's just really, really changed in it two is. years. It's dramatic. Thank you. It's dramatic change. So I want to thank you for that. Yes. Thank you personally for that. It looks outstanding out there. And this last night when I was there, it was probably, I don't know, 7 o'clock. Busy. There were people everywhere. And used to, two years ago at 7 o'clock, there was no one there. Yeah. 
You know, there were people everywhere, and it, it just made me very happy to see that. People were on the walking trail, people were in the batting cages, people were in the dog park, there was a lady pulling weeds in the garden, there were people playing frisbee golf, mm -hmm. there were people everywhere. Yeah. So thank you for that. Yes, ma'am. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Item number five is a presentation about the new Little Free Library located at the Wendell Community Center. So that's something else great going on at the Community Center, but I intentionally didn't say anything about it just yet because I didn't want to spoil the surprise. And we're going to hear from Daisha Smith. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Board. My name is... Put the microphone a little bit closer to your mouth so I can hear you. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank you for having me here today. Um, I'm in Girls Country 4484, and for my Silver Award project, I made the Little Free Library. And I decided to make the library because reading is very important to me, and I felt that all children should be able to have one. And I'd like to thank Mr. Jeff and the town of Wendell for allowing me to put my library at the community center. You're very welcome, and we're very pleased to have it. And I saw it yesterday when I was tooling around out there, and it looked great. And thank you so much for putting it out there. Thank you. It means a lot to the citizens, and we really appreciate it. Is, is it already stocked with books, or is it, is it in need of yeah, there's a few more? It, it's, re, it's stocked with books, but I go every other week to, to restock it. All right. And you did this to earn a badge for Girl Scouts. To, to earn an right? award. An award, okay. Yes, well, congratulations and thank you for being so civic minded. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Item number six is recognition of the Town of Wendell Finance Department for uh, attaining the comprehensive annual financial report <clears throat> uh, for the fiscal year ending in 2017. Um, Madam Mayor, before we get started, I just want to uh, personally thank the board and all the support that you've given the Finance Department. Um, in front of you tonight, you've got your adopted budget that was done at the last meeting. So um, we also have another nice little gift that we've got um, before Garrett does his presentation. But I do want to recognize the Finance Department. They all are here tonight. So if, if I could take a minute, Mayor, just to Absolutely. introduce those, I'd really appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, Malia Edwards is our HR specialist. She's been with the department since you know, since I've been here and it's been pretty much, you know, my right hand person there the whole entire time. Um, Garrett is, is, is the new accounting technician. He's been here for a couple years now. Um, and along a guest with him tonight is his fiance, Catherine. We'll make her an honorary finance person tonight. <laughs> um, and then we've got uh, Elizabeth Jones is our customer service representative, and she's also brought a guest tonight, you know, our newest member of the finance department, Miss <laughs> Evie Jones. And so, um, I see her. <laughs> you know, I, I, I couldn't do these things without the group that we have, and so I'm really uh, appreciative of the board and your support, and um, I do want to hand these out before Garrett does this presentation. I'll, okay. I'm going to turn it over to him and let him, he's the architect of this, okay. this, this massive report, so I want him to take all the credit. Okay. Good evening, Madam Mayor and members of the board. Um, like Butch said, this is uh, our CAFR, our Comprehensive Annual Financial Report for fiscal year ended 2017. So we're pretty much a whole year removed from that. Um, so this is our second year applying, our second year being awarded the uh, Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. So we're very proud of that. We're two for two. Um, the, uh, the CAFR is awarded by the GFOA, that's the Government Finance Officers Association. Um, and as you can see there, this is our second year uh, applying and being approved. Um, the CAFR is a voluntary document that represents above and beyond financial and non-financial reporting. 
Um, it's made up of three primary sections and a fourth section, which is optional. Um, it is required to be submitted no later than six months uh, after the closing of the fiscal year that's being represented, which in our case is December 31st. Um, the CAFR is reviewed by a panel of evaluators and is determined whether or not the report complies with financial reporting standards and whether or not it portrays a true story of the town's financial and non-financial position. Um, as Butch uh, mentioned earlier, those are the members of the finance department. Myself, uh, are the director, Butch K. Malia Edwards is our human resource specialist, and Elizabeth Jones is our customer service representative. Um, but so there's more that goes into it than just the finance department, though. There's um, there's sections or there's tables in the statistical section uh, that require the assistance of other departments. Um, for example, Public Works has provided us with how much, uh, how many ton tons of limbs and leaves have been picked up, um, how many miles of streets we're maintaining, and how many yards of sidewalks the town has. Uh, police gives us information for incident reports throughout the year, parts and rec which is growing as uh, every year with uh, activities, um, athletic participation, event participation, excuse me, participation. Um, so that's very, uh, it takes a lot to, go, uh, to put this all together. It's more than just the finance department, it's a town-wide effort. Um, so the, like I said, the CAFR is made up of four sections. The introductory section, which is, um, it's made up of the letter of transmittal, which basically is just the manager submits and says, hey, we are applying for this, and kind of paints a picture of where the town's at. Um, it lists the board of officials and the organizational chart. It's um, nothing overly exciting. But then after that is the financial report, financial section, which is all the audited financials from the uh, previous fiscal year. Um, that's basically a, a point in time. It's, everything that the town is the town's financial status as of June 30th. Um, next is the statistical section, which is, uh, I think is more interesting. It paints a picture of the current year as well as the past nine years of uh, data, which includes your financial data, but as well, it also includes the, uh, the participation numbers and uh, incident reports and everything that, as I previously mentioned. Um, it just shows where the town's been and where it's going and how it's improved over time, hopefully improved over time. And finally, the fourth section, which I mentioned is optional, but we have participated in the past two years, is the compliance section. Um, it shows the auditor's findings, if there are any, which we have not had, fortunately. Um, it lists whether or not the town, they, the auditors find that the town has sufficient internal controls and it lists the schedule of expenditures for state awards, which we, uh, the main one we had was the uh, PARDIF grant that we received, and as Jeff mentioned, we just closed out. Um, so I was trying to keep this brief, and I think I've covered just about everything, so uh, we thank you for your support. Uh, the Finance Department thanks all the other departments for helping this uh, happen. Um, so if you have any questions, I'm free to hear them. Thank you for your hard work and congratulations for being recognized two years in a row. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Appreciate it. I love it. Anytime something happens, it shines positive light on our town. So. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We're having such a feel-good night tonight. All right, item number nine is uh, appointments to the Town of Wendell Citizen Advisory Board's Round Two. Ms. Goggins. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Madam Mayor and Board, um, at the conclusion of the appointments to the Citizen Advisory Boards at your May 14th meeting, the following boards have vacancies effective July 1, 2018. Your Board of Adjustment, Economic Development Committee, Parks and Rec, and Tree Board. Round two of the Citizen Advisory Board recruitment launched May 29th and wrapped up June 14th. Applications are in your agenda packet this evening for your review. No action is requested at this meeting. 
This is the board's opportunity to put a face with the name for those applicants who have attended tonight's meeting. Um, the board is requested to take action at its July 9th town board meeting. All right, thank you very much. So anyone that's here that submitted an application, linger afterwards a few minutes and come talk to us. Thank you for your willingness to serve the town. Item number 11 is a discussion by the town board to consider and authorize the town attorney to proceed with the formation of a nonprofit entity and obtain tax status, a tax exempt status for an event called Meet on Main. Ms. Heiner. Madam Mayor, members of the board, uh, the board is requested to authorize the town attorney to proceed with filings for a nonprofit, ent nonprofit entity uh, named Meet on Main. Uh, Wednesday, May the 16th, the owners of Grill Billy's, uh, Joe and Sherry uh, Pino, they hosted a meeting that included several downtown businesses, Wendell Chamber uh, uh, director and Mayor Gray, several town staff, and they wanted to discuss the formation of a group to raise funds uh, for to host downtown events. Uh, they wanted to see people uh, in, bring them downtown to enhance the economic development experience that we have seen grow over the last several years. The goals of the group were to bring awareness of the smart small town, draw people to the downtown that have not been here before, and have events with activities that are family focused. The consensus at that time was meet on Main. <clears throat> um, the uh, Town's Appearance Commission, as many of you have heard in the past, they have done a wonderful job at coming together and raising funds for different art projects, murals, uh, the last several years. They uh, currently ho host a party with a purpose, Spring into the Arts Walk, uh, several events where that involve fundraising. And so some of that is just outside the scope of what our general fund was intended to do and its purpose. The Appearance Committee uh, members have uh, provided support through the use of personal bank accounts, collection of donated funds by volunteers, and again, we just don't feel that this is prudent. We, we just re received and heard about the CAFR, and that's because you're doing best practices. Uh, this is not the best practice, and we're very thankful that we've got this group. We want to keep them active, but we know we need to change the way we're doing this. Uh, the staff attorney has researched options to date. A solution has not been presented uh, outside of development of an independent organization. And some of that we've talked about with the board before, uh, talking about developing a, a nonprofit. On uh, Tuesday the 12th, there was another meeting that was held with additional um, uh, businesses that were interested, uh, reached out a little bit further. And we talked about how to encourage the participants uh, as well as those out in uh, residence, new residents in Wendell Falls. What we were finding is that many of the residents work in Raleigh. And so they are turning and going toward Raleigh and not toward downtown Wendell. <clears throat> so how do we get them here? So that is something that we're looking at. So more than 5,000 has verbally been committed. Again, we don't have a source for taking these funds. However, the town is not in a position to receive and distribute funds from the general fund. The town of Wendell is a, as a, is a recipient of $50,000 grant for downtown revitalization and economic development, um, as uh, Commissioner Joyner just stated. Uh, and so during these uh, discussions, Meet on Main is amenable uh, to having the Appearance Commission come under their umbrella, under as a nonprofit. Uh, as the intention of Meet on Main is to promote and fundraising events, uh, the request is to authorize up to $5,000 to come from the monies that are given to uh, the town by the state for downtown revitalization and economic de development for the costs associated with creating and organizing the nonprofit and to direct the town attorney to proceed with filings for Meet on May. I did make contact in more in general because I was waiting for the state budget to be approved, but at that time I, was asked, I asked what those funds could be used for if the budget was adopted. Uh, they said what it can't be used for is paying of salaries and the purchasing of, of food and drink 
for individuals. And that is not, again, something that we have no intentions of doing. It would be for the creation of the Meet on Main. Um, the group has indicated they do not have uh, plans to ask for continuing ongoing financial support from the town only to get started at this time. Uh, nonprofits have to have a third of their donation revenues from a fairly broad base of public support. And uh, it takes about just a few weeks to actually get your tax um, to file. However, the tax exempt status that you have to fill out could take three to 12 months. When I uh, spoke with the attorney, uh, they said while waiting the approval of the tax exempt status, the group is formed, we have to put together a board of directors, and we can move forward. And, um, and anything that we sign or put down will say tax exempt status pending. So it would be filed. At a minimum, a meeting of the board must be held of the nonprofit annually. Uh, typically, they have three officers. You can have more, president, secretary, and treasurer. Uh, we have had volunteers at Meet on Main have volunteered to assume those positions already. The, again, the group has asked for no ongoing support. They would like to uh, form and to see if they could kind of have an inaugural event this fall to kind of kick off what they hope to have next, next summer. So um, they were looking at something the fall of this year. So I would entertain any um, questions you may have. It may be that I have to take them back um, and ask more of the group or more of the attorney, but this is the direction and the resource for funding economic development in our downtown that we currently do not have. Does anyone have any questions about the development of the group. Mr. Piner, is this a, uh, this uh, organization, this Meadow Main, this would be an independent organization from the town, though, because you wouldn't have any affiliation yeah. with the town, correct? That is correct. That is correct. Um, in addition to the board, they will be, you know, it, ha it will have a roster. It could be that people that are part of the town in connection some way could be on that, that group. But the board will probably be made up of individuals separate from those that are employed in some way with the town. So we're having our town attorney do the filings. Is this just because we're going to be contributing the first money, or first? Is that why, or is this just a? Um, well, uh, in. Anybody could do it. Um, it was that they had asked for assistance. Okay. And so when we looked for funding, this was an opportunity when we heard that we were going to get the economic development funds. And just because of who we know and the estimate of what it would cost, uh, we could hire someone other than the town attorney. But this was what the information he had provided us. And I used him as a resource. Yeah, and, and because of the fact that the town would have the benefit of the nonprofit for accepting funding for the Spring into the Arts when they raise money for murals, um, the Party with a Purpose, and the other activities of that group, it gives us some skin in the game and that, that we can ask them to please accept that. But we're okay. not really affiliated. Does that make sense? So, would the, so when the parents <laughs> come in, you had these fundraisers, then are they then using their funds? To donate towards this group, or this group, you would write the check to this group. Okay. And they would keep the money, and then the bills would come in, and then they would pay the bills. Okay. And that way, people, when they make donations to the appearance committee, could get um, tax write-off for okay. it because it would be a nonprofit. It would also make um, available a lot of other grants and opportunities that nonprofits can get that we haven't been able to take advantage of up until this time. Would this affect any of the uh, doings or dealings of the current appearance commission? Uh, no, office? not at all. It would make their job easier. Easier. Cool. I think. Do you think? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we're, again, volunteers have been concerned about putting monies from these uh, fundraising efforts into their own accounts 
or or not and keeping it in cash, uh, then this would be a a revenue a, a source for us to be able to uh, keep those monies that would be independent from the town. And a lot and, of communities have something very similar to this, downtown development groups or whatever. This is just yes. to be our, our version. version of that. And and it could be, as we stated, we're calling it meet on main, but you're correct. It could be a downtown revitalization right. development group. It could be right. called an economic development committee. It could have any of a another broad range of names that connect it back to economic development and that's that's not a problem either but this one they they were talking about meet on main because they were looking at wanting to do something on main street there, in next spring hopefully they are hoping to start in april and go through august or september and have an event there once a month a big event on main street okay. close main street so then they're going to call it meet on main play on words kind of like other towns have something that has something to do with the name of their one of their streets. Friday, exactly. Right, okay. right. So that's where it came from. But it doesn't have to be called that. It, it does have to have a name. I don't know. I don't think it means anything. Well, the corporation, could, you know, name, name could even be different, and that right. could be what it's the it events are called. It could be one of the things it does. Yeah, okay. that's that's exactly right. Okay. Are there any other questions? I'll make a motion to authorize the town attorney to proceed with filings for a nonprofit entity named Meeple Maine. Okay. So we have a motion to authorize the attorney. Do we want to put a money up? Did we say up to five thousand dollars? I said up up to five thousand. I bought motion to include up to five thousand. Amended uh, with the up to five thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is there any discussion of the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, I think we've gone back and picked up everything we skipped. I feel mm -hmm. a little discombobulated tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, item number 12 is an update on board committees by town board members, and that one is mine, actually. Uh, Campo. I uh, met last Friday, and we discussed the 2018 build grant applications and the fiscal year 2018 Wake Transit Work Plan. The fourth quarter amendment, there's amendments um, every time we're there, just about. Uh, we received the Go Raleigh complimentary ADA plan and discussed the fiscal year 2018 federal uh, transit formula uh, funding distribution plan. We held a public hearing about draft spot five regional impact point assignments and we discussed the fiscal year 2020 LAP program, the fiscal year 2019 Wake Transit work plan the Wake Transit BRT Evaluation Framework, and the Wake Transit Bus Plan and Service Guidelines and Performance Measures. So, that's what we did at Campo. All right, number 13 is Commissioner's Reports. We'll start with Commissioner Carroll. Nothing tonight, Mayor. Commissioner Lutz. Nothing tonight. Commissioner Myrick. Nothing tonight. Commissioner Boyette. Well, you know I'm gonna have to say something now. <laughs> um, a time of transition in town. Um, got a couple of um, very valued and well respected employees uh, move on to bigger and better things. Um, first one being uh, Patrick Reedy, um, who's already finished up here. Um, <coughs> I just want to say I wish him the best of luck. Uh, he's absolutely phenomenal um, individual employee and um, you know aside from the fact that he was a Virginia Tech fan but I won't hold that against him um, but wish him all the best of luck in Wake Forest um, and the other one who will be leaving us soon is Miss Tama Hughes I can't stress enough how helpful Miss Hughes has been uh, to me especially um, she keeps the, uh, the trains running as they say uh, the computers the phones, everything up here, um, none of it uh, works um, with, without her touch. And, and I know we're going to struggle to find anyone nearly half as competent as she has been. Um, so knowledgeable and so helpful. And I hate to see her go to pursue a new opportunity in the, in the private sector. But um, uh, she's just been absolutely great. I, I can't say enough nice things about her. And. Uh, <laughs> even if she does like to hide in the back. Um, but anyway, um, 
I just wanted to at least say thank you to those two and to all the employees uh, in the town. Um, there are other changes coming. Um, you know, we are in the middle of a search for a new town manager as ours has announced her retirement. So, um, you know, there's a lot of changes coming up, and um, we just appreciate everybody putting their best foot forward to help out the town. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, since we last met, I attended the um, East Wake High School graduation, and I wanted to just thank them for inviting me. They sent me an invitation. I was thrilled to get it and honored to attend um, on their behalf. It's always a very special day, um, and I want to congratulate the class of 2018. I can't wait to see all that you accomplish. I'm sure it will be great things. Um, we also, this past weekend, had Big Truck Day. If you weren't there, you really missed out. I could hear the horns the, the whole way to my house. <laughs> um, it, some little boys were really enjoying those horns, I think, so that was real cute. Uh, we had a great turnout, so thanks to Jeff and the Parks and Rec folks for organizing that. It was a fun, a day, fun day, and the public works for being there and bringing all their things that y'all do for the town. I think it's nice for citizens to see the things that y'all do instead of just seeing them ride by and seeing them in front, in front of their homes. It's nice for them to see the things that get used right here in Wendell. A quick reminder, the 4th of July is coming up and the Wendell Historical Society is planning a big day for the 4th of July, a parade, children's a parade, but part of the parade is a children's parade. Um, so we're encouraging children to dress up and themselves in patriotic clothes and decorate their bikes and wagons and things. You can register at Universal Chevrolet in a tent, and I'll be standing there, so look for me. And you can start doing that probably by 9.30, I would think, and there will be some awards, and it's going to be a fun, fun day. There's going to be veterans and floats and bands and all kinds of things. A short program at the square followed by games and a three-legged race, egg and spoon, and my favorite new thing this year is the watermelon seed spitting contest. I feel like next year we'll have watermelons growing out there. There's also going to be free hot dogs, so please join us and celebrate that and um, have a fun morning with us at the town square. One last thing I want to mention, I have been contacted several times today about the stoplight at Eagle Rock Road and Wendell Falls Parkway. And so I want to give, uh, just comment about it. It was previous to the stop lights being installed. This was a four-way stop, which meant that everybody who came to that stop, that intersection, had to stop, no matter what. Well, now it's changed, and you only have to stop if the light's red. If the light's green, you can proceed through. If the light's yellow, slow down, because it's going to turn red soon. It works just like any other stop light. And I'm amazed that there seems to be a lot of folks really struggling navigating it. It's just like any other stoplight. Please be careful. Be aware that those around us, uh, you would think around Wendell, people have never seen a stoplight before. So please be careful. But if it's red, stop. If it's green, you can go. It's as simple as that. Please be careful. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All right, we're adjourned.